Hey everyone, Matthew Doyle for Autodesk here. This week I'm going to bring you guys a short tutorial on how to use the new Workspaces feature in Maya and Maya LT. And I think you're going to find that despite its simplicity, and this video won't be very long due to that simplicity, it is going to add a lot of power and flexibility to your workflow. Now it doesn't change how Maya works. You still have access to the shelf. You still have access to the hotbox and all of the menus that are available there. Your gestural based workflow is not changing. All it's really doing is giving you another option of how you want to work and how you want to organize your workflow. Now basically what it does is it provides a drop down that gives you access to the various workflows for various tasks. So you could have a workflow set up for UV editing, a workflow set up for animation, for modeling, and so forth and so on. And of course, the, the options are basically limitless there. It's just how you decide to set things up. Now, let's just go ahead and jump right into it so we can see how it works. If you look in the top right corner of Maya or Maya LT, you're going to see the workspaces drop down. And there are already some pre-built ones, and I'm in what's called Maya Classic, which has the standard viewport, the shelf, the menu bars, your animation range slider, and so forth and so on. And below that we see we have modeling standard, modeling expert, scripting, UV editing, rigging, and animation. And these are just ones that developers put in that they felt uh, would be standard that you guys would want to use. And they of course have what they would expect a typical workflow to include. So if I were to just click on rigging, you can see here that this one has the outliner on the left. It has a 3D viewport. It also has the node editor as well as the channel box and uh, display layers and animation layers. Now, if you want to change this, the great thing is, is this doesn't have to stay this way. If you want your rigging to be slightly different, you could do that. So for instance, if we wanted to, we could just pull out the outliner here and then turn that off. And now this will be permanently the new version for the rigging workspaces. So if I jump over to animation and you can see it changes to the animation workflow. Now, if I jump back to rigging, we can see that it no longer has the outliner. Now, if you want to take it back to factory default, that's easy enough. Just go to the Windows menu, choose Workspaces here at the top, go down to where it says Reset Rigging to Factory Default, and that's going to bring everything back to the way it was before you made your changes. So if you don't want to change these, if you want to leave them the way they are, you can always create your own workspace. And that, again, if you jump to Windows, Workspaces, you can see here that you can save current workspace as. So if we jump back over to Maya Classic, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and disable some of these options here. So I'm just going to basically go to my hotbox here and I'm going to disable the helpline. I'm going to disable the shelf. Uh, and then I'll basically, let's see, let's turn off the time slider and we'll turn off the range slider and we'll just leave it like that. And maybe I'll bring the outliner back in. So we'll go to our windows menu, choose outliner. And I'm going to drag this over here to the left so it docks. All right. And then I'm going to keep this the way it is. I like this. Maybe I'll open my channel box here. Uh, and then I'm just going to save this. So I'll go to windows, workspaces, and then save current workspace as, and I'll just name this my workspace, just like that. And now, we can see that my workspace has been saved at the top of the menu. So if I jump over to rigging, we've got our rigging workspace. If I jump back to my workspace, here we have the way we set it up. Our custom workspace is saved. Now this is pretty cool being able to set up these workspaces, but you can also actually add hotkeys and stuff. So if I go to windows workspaces again, and then you can see here uh, to the right of each workspace, we've got our typical options box here. So if I click on the options box for my workspace, you can see here that uh, I can link a menu set to this workspace. I can also link a hotkey set to the workspace and I can link viewport 2.0 presets to this workspace. So if we just click on link a hotkey, we've got our Maya default hotkeys. Now, obviously I don't have any other hotkeys set up here. I don't have any custom ones, but if I did, I could easily select them from this drop down. Same thing with the viewport 2.0 settings. I have the default settings. And then of course I could just apply and close. Now here's a quick example. If I were to go ahead and go to options viewport 2.0, I could create a preset, save, save setting as a preset, my VP2 preset, right? Just like that. And now if I go up to my workspaces and go to the options, I should be able to set my VP2 preset there, right? So apply and close. And uh, if we double check, we can see that it is still linked to this preset. Obviously, if it's default, there's no need to link because default is default. It's always available. But we can see here now, I've created this new viewport 2.0 preset and it is linked to my workspace. 
All right, so I think that's going to do it for this short video on the new workspaces feature inside of Maya and Maya LT, which is going to allow you guys to work in a more flexible manner the way you want to work, depending, of course, on the task you're trying to perform. I hope you guys enjoy the new feature, and we will see you guys next time.